Madison Square Garden will be hosting a I didn't get a chance to watch this yesterday. by two female fighters. In one corner, Amanda Serrano, seven-weight world champion with 42 victories and 30 knockouts. Ah. In the other corner, Katie Taylor, the undefeated and undisputed lightweight champion. Like Wait, we should have a mic drop so you could, like, do that whole thing. I've always wanted to do that. All right, they, they are pound for pound the world's top two female boxers and they are both as you see here with us this morning good morning to both of you guys good morning. Good morning. i am so excited for you i am so excited for what this is here let me pause it right here i'm gonna watch this in full i actually just got finished watching the um media workout for katie taylor and amanda serrano which took place in uh, madison square garden today um here it is right here and the fight is happening this weekend. So I'm trying to I'm trying to think, what fight am I more excited about? Two different cards. One on ESPN starting at about 10.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oscar Valdez, WBC, 130-pound champion, taking on Shakira Stevenson, WBO, 130-pound champion. And I believe the Ring Magazine Championship is going to be on the line. Or this right here, undisputed. WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO, IBO, I believe the IBO, Ring Magazine. A fight that we've been waiting for for like three, four years now. I remember talking to Eddie Hearn about it in uh, Philly. I, be I, I forgot who Katie Taylor fought in Philly. Was it uh, Rose Volante? I believe so. Um, it's finally here. It's taking place on the zone in Madison Square Garden. And this fight... Even though this is taking place on an app and streaming service, this fight seems to have like more overall, like big feel to it. I mean, it is undisputed, but it has like a bigger feel to it. You know, being in what they call the mecca of boxing. I look at New York as um, uh, uh, Vegas as being a mecca of boxing. You know, um, MGM Grand, you know, or just Vegas. The Madison Square Garden, I don't see that as being a mecca. I'm sorry, my personal opinion. Um, but overall, it's like the big fight in New York. You can see them on the day today show. You know, it's it just it just it just feels bigger. So, what fight am I more interested in? If I was to say off the top of my head, this one because this one can be more damaging, you know, to a fighter's career if it makes sense. You know, for example, if Katie Taylor loses, that's going to be like okay, well. You know, she's the pressure fighter, brawler, power puncher. She met a boxer, a woman who could actually box, and that's been her Achilles heel. To where Amanda Serrano lose, it's going to be like, damn, you know, I want to know what the odds is. I don't gamble. So, but who is the favorite to win this fight? I would expect that it would be Amanda Serrano, right? No, Katie Taylor is proven. You know, she's got all the accolades, but Amanda Serrano is good. You know, seventh division, seventh division world champion. Um, all the way up to as high as 140 pounds. You know, she's fought as high as fighting someone, I believe, who weighed in at 141, something like that. The lower she's been is 115. And that was just a couple of years ago, a few years ago. So look, just look at all the different weight jumps. And, you know, it must be, you know, as I said in a previous video, I really don't care, you know, about like, you know, PDs and all that shit in box. And I think, you know, I don't really care. I'm one of the type of people where it's like everybody juicing. But when you look 42, one and one 30 KOs, people have been wondering, you know, how she's been able to be jumping through all these weights. Remember 115. Now she's fighting, you know, um, for 135 pound championship. By the way, she fucked Miriam Gutierrez up something big time. Mutual opponent by her and Katie Taylor. Had her looking like uh, Voldemort. See, I'm going to show y'all. Hold on. I'm going to show you real quick. In fact, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I'm T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360. All right. Here we are. No, you know what? Uh, Where's she at? Where was she at? Like, look, bro. Like, she just fucked her face up. Or made like a puffer fish. She look like a puffer fish. Anyway, moving on. Um, Let me watch the rest of this interview. I mean, here that they had on... um on the Today Show, and we're going to take a little jump cut, and then we'll be right back. History Controversy with Fight View 360, and this undercard is cracking. Digging it. Uh, please take your time out. Like the video. The next day. Ah, uh, you know what? I just I just watched enough of it. You know, I mean, hey, listen, shout out to those ladies. You know, uh, you know, good TV spot, but for us hardcores, it wasn't nothing really of note. 
for you to really go back and listen to, except for that the big room may be sold out. What does it mean to you to be a, be a part of history? Oh, it's always, that's one of my thing. I've always make, um, like to break records, Some make history. News. So yeah. to be in this iconic event, um, sharing the ring with Katie Taylor, another amazing champion, undisputed champion, undefeated champion, it's um, truly an honor. You know, we're in Madison Square Garden, first time headlining. That's a square garden, and they say it's almost sold out. And they say people don't want to see women fight. That tells you something totally different. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Puerto Ricans in um, New York are very loyal to sports and just overall. And you know, Amanda Serrano in the New York area is very known in the uh, Hispanic population. And Katie Taylor, well, Irish, you can't go wrong there. So, you know, them being sold out, or even if, you know, they sell even more than like 10,000 tickets, that's a big deal. And they're getting paid some significant money. I dropped something in my keyboard. My bad, I'm tripping. But um, what was I going to say? Here's the thing. Let's go look at the uh, resumes real quick. Uh, Katie Taylor, 20 and 0, with uh, six KOs, 35 years old, significant wins. By the way, she fought Jennifer Hahn. I don't really consider that a significant win. Jennifer Hahn just got um, uh, uh, beat by Michaela Mayer about three weeks or so ago. But, you know, uh, Natasha Jonas, who's now a champion at 154, this is a quality significant win. Uh, both her and Amanda Serrano share a similar opponent in Miriam Gutierrez, except, of course, um, as we talked about, you know, the uh, the puffer fish. You know, she beat, Amanda beat her up beat her up pretty bad and then you know took a picture with her um delphine pursuun she beat her cleanly christina uh uh linatari i always mess mess her name up but quality fighter quality win she has a win over alicia bumgartner as you can see there rose Vellante, that was for a title quality win eva wallstrom well she she was always beating her up the Cindy Serrano fight should have been a bigger fight than what it was. And Cindy Serrano just didn't really seem like she came to fight. Cindy, Cindy, obviously the sister of Amanda and the husband, wife of the trainer of uh, Serrano. Jessica McCoskill, another in win that is aged very well. Vivian Obanoff, well, you know, if you don't know the story with her, allegedly, allegedly she, she beat her boyfriend to death. You know, crazy shit. And she's like a waiting trial or something. Crazy as shit, man. So the question is, who do I think is going to win? By the way, let's go look at uh, Amanda Serrano. 42, 1 and 1, 30 KOs. Heather Hardy, quality win. You know what? Question. Even if she has all these accomplishments, this is something you don't hear talked about a lot or enough. Who has the better resume? You know, who is the better resume? And I'm going to say Katie Taylor. Like, overall names, Katie Taylor, bro. So, yeah, you know, man, Serrano's been collecting these belts over the last, you know, four or five years or so. Six. But it ain't really been nobody of real, real note. You dig? You know, I mean, not that, not of the note as who Katie Taylor's been fighting. I mean, yeah, man, the Serrano, in my opinion, is more skilled. You know, the favorite to win the fight. But as it stands right now, like, Katie Taylor's res resume is better. And then you can make the argument, well, of course, look who she was beating up, you know. Katie Taylor would have those type of knockouts, too. Amanda Serrano definitely passes the eye test. And she, you know, all she does is live, eat, breathe, box it. You know, I don't even think she got no man or nothing. None of my business. I'm just saying, to put them to the make is, like, she live, eat, like, she just breathe. Her whole life is boxing. Same thing with Katie Taylor. You know, so, like, these women, like, even though she, you know, she's been dabbling in MMA and, you know, there was some controversy about when the fight was supposed to happen before and, you know, some $10,000 money that was supposed to be whatever. None, you know, none of my business. However, I'm wondering if Katie can hit her with some shit, right? To keep her, like, off of her. Because that's what Katie's going to have to do is to, you know, get the respect of Amanda Serrano. And what type of fight is Amanda going to fight? Because as we talked about, looking at the resume, she's the most, Katie Taylor's going to be the most skilled she's ever fought. So what type of fight does Amanda Serrano fight? She got to play keep away. I don't think she want to, she don't want to stay in toe to toe with Katie Taylor, even though on paper, 
she's got those 30 KOs, you know, so that does mean something, despite if, you know, who you may say she's knocking out. Still, nonetheless, on paper, even though Katie Taylor with a tougher competition has only got six, but I just don't think that she wants to stay in front of Katie Taylor. And Katie Taylor, sometimes she can get drug into brawls and, you know, like doesn't really have the proper defense. So what if Katie Taylor get knocked out? Put it this way. I'm more of a 55-45, you know, for, you know, Serrano. I don't see it as being like a shutout or anything like that, you know, and I can see ways that Katie Taylor can win. That's all I'm saying. And the crazy thing is between 130 and 147, there's so many fights that can be made for these women, you know, win or lose. For example, um, just names off the top of my head, not in any particular order, Alicia Bumgarner, Michaela Mayer, um, Cecilia Brockus, Jessica McCaskill again, depending on what Dr. Natasha Jonas uh, wants to do. Who else am I missing? I already said Bumgarner, Terry Harper. Um, quality, like quality names between 130 and 147. And you know how these, the women are, you know, they can jump up and down between weight classes. So it's going to be interesting to see what the winner's going to do. But also, before we go, let's talk about the undercard. Because let me tell you something, it's something else. Like I'm digging like a good portion of these fights on the undercard. Oh, by the way, what am I doing? Let's go listen to uh, Katie Taylor, see what she had to say. Like she always sounds like she out of breath. She's like, you know, I just think she's just a great fighter. <laughs> no disrespect, man. I know how some fans can get. They'd be like, ah, who is he chatting shit, mate? They ain't never been in the ring. Relax. Like, everybody loosen up. Like, jeez. Yeah, I haven't missed... And besides, I'm half black, half Irish, and half uh, El Chicano. Mexicano. So, like, you know, like, I can't be racist. The last few. Yeah, so. no. Keep showing it. It's a press release. It yeah. needs to, you know, you, you can't just go... Let's listen to... Male boxing. Now, yeah. sat down. Yeah. She thought it was worth it's male or female. I believe I'll let her with you. Uh, the bias is, is strong in me because <laughs> I love her that much for what she's done. But she's yeah, we're, just, we're not she's... very balanced in our opinions there, <laughs> are we? You know? and... Do you want me to bring it back? But I yeah. apologise. Get Jake, it, where's Jake? <laughs> yeah. I don't worry, he's told us everything's around. <laughs> yeah. do, but uh, when we just think about this moment and this occasion, the, we said before the, the women's paths have come so different, but they're both here and it's... It's a time that it's yeah. just now. I said, Molly, that the great thing about this fight is, is there's a lot of people, sometimes broadcasters, commercial companies, who go, we should be supporting women's boxing because it's a good look, it's a good thing to do. And they should be supporting women's right. sport, right? But when it's actually good enough, when it's its own product, when it's standalone, and when it becomes irrelevant that it's male or female, that's when it's a special moment. So selling out Madison Square Garden for this fight, it's not full of people going, oh, let's go and support women's boxing. They're going, let's go and watch a great fight. Yes. You know, and the same when Molly fights now and, and great stars of the UFC, they're not going, oh, it's Molly McCann, oh, it's female MMA. It's just, it's just she's a star. MMA, yeah. You know, and, and Nunes has done it, Ronda Rousey's done it, all people have done it before. And, and that's what's so important about this. And we need to eventually even stop talking about women's boxing and men's boxing. It's just boxing. And you know, I remember just a quick story I got on Katie Taylor because she. she you know what I don't like? I remember once I had a great idea that I was. The two minute rounds does piss me off. That does piss me off. It's like, okay, all right, damn. Like, if any fight should be three minute rounds, it should be this one. You know, like they got to, and he's right, you know, they got to get rid of the, you know, the women's boxing and men's, obviously it's still going to be talked about and referred to as women's boxing and men's boxing, but still like the three minute rounds, man, like, you know, we, we need those. Put some men on a car, put this, it's, not, it's irrelevant. Just put great boxing on and you're going to see great boxing on Saturday night. You're going to see, I've said it before, some may, may not agree. This is the Mayweather Pacquiao of, of the men's boxing. boxing. Right, just at a better time. Yeah. So I paid a lot of money for my ticket that night, and I thought it was rubbish. <laughs> well, I'm getting mine for free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be joined by Katie Taylor in a few moments. Oh, right. Like, it needs to be more than a, more than a, just about winning the press release. It yeah. needs to, you know, you, you can't just go through the motions. Oh, with we'll, we'll use the... Which yeah. we're never going to forget. Yeah, Amanda, April 30th, where was you? 
I was in Madison Square yeah. Garden and I watched Katie win. I didn't even realise you are going to be here. Yeah, I've yeah. never... I've never I've, yeah. I haven't missed the last few. So. Yeah, no, it's so, so grateful. Well, thank no you so problem. much. The path to get to this moment, to this weekend, in your words, what did it take to get here? Um, it's just an awful lot of years of sacrifice, I guess, and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, barriers to break down over the years. Um, uh, just a lot of hard work, a lot of, a lot of you know, dedication, and constantly in the gym. My whole life has been a trainer, kind of basically. Um, so Someone said to me, what does Katie do? I says, I think she just runs, trains, <laughs> and goes to cheer. <laughs> so, like, exactly. That's it, that's it. Yeah, happy down to a tea. I know, but what more do you want? Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. This, that's living for me, yeah. What are you feeling really good about inside the ring at yeah, this moment? I feel great. Um, the preparation has gone fantastic. The training camp has been, has been great. Um, I feel strong. I feel fit. Um, I feel like I am going to showcase my absolute best on Saturday night. And I feel like these kind of opponents get the best out of me as you well. You can't get knocked out with a neck um, like that. This is a history-making moment. And I, uh, I'm, um, prepared she could probably eat a shot from Wilder well. and just be buzzed. Do you allow yourself time to nah, she go to sleep. Like, jeez. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to not to think about it too much. Or, yeah, you can't um, restrain yourself if you're thinking about it every single day. But I think, um, you know, when you fought Natasha in the Olympics, yeah. like, it, that's yeah. this, but, like, yeah. on steroids. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> so you walk that yeah. walk, and you know what yeah. you, you know exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, you know yeah, yeah. I, I, I love the fact that I was able to get through those fights and come out victorious because... Not only do you have to show a skill in those fights, but you have to show a lot of heart as well. And um, so sometimes in these big, big fights, it's always a grittier fighter who's, who's going to come out on top. And, um, and it, it, in this fight, it's going to take a lot of skill. All right, she's really not saying anything, yo. She ain't really saying nothing. Let's go look at the undercard. Yo, Jesse Vargas versus Liam Smith. Now, it's going to be some bloodshed in this joint. This fight really gets my, gets my attention right here. It gets the blood boiling. I'm really digging this fight. How y'all feel about it? When was the last time we saw Jesse Vargas? 29-3-2 and two with 11 KOs. We ain't seen him since he lost to Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia has since lost to Sandor Martin. He's a part-time fighter. So we ain't seen him in 26 months. You know, he's in politics now. And remember, this fight's taking place at 154. Yo, he might... This might be... Listen, don't... Listen, don't be surprised if he gets stopped, bro. Liam Smith ain't nothing to fuck around with. And he's durable, battle-tested. But also, he's long in the tooth. Meaning, like, he's been in a lot of wars. And he's taken some beatings. 33-1 and one with 17 KOs. The uh, last remaining... No, I was going to say last. I, I, was, I forgot all about Colum. Forgot all about Colum. Well, anyway, yeah. You know, uh, the last two of the Smith brothers remaining. You know, Steven's pretty much retired, right? He's retired, right? And Paul, you know, well, you've seen the state of him lately. He ain't coming back. No disrespect, Paul. Please don't block me on Twitter. Anyway, yeah, the Ann Fowler fight, this was a good-ass fight. But nonetheless, you know, stopped Fowler. And, he, and then early, it looked like he was on his way to getting stopped. The Gravano fight, you know, many people felt that Liam won this fight. You know, Roberto Garcia, okay, these were just, you know, the build back up the confidence you know, after getting his ass beat for all those rounds against uh, Jaime Munguia. You know, beat up Eggington in five. You know, the two Liam Williams wins, those kind of aged a little well. You see what I'm saying? And then, you know, the beating he took from Canelo. Canelo punched him in the stomach. You know, he's been in some shit. Liam Smith has been in some shit, bro. So that's why, you know, I would pick him to stop him. Anyway, um, let's take a little bit of a jump cut. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Be right back. And whoever wins will go on and will fight for the world title, I believe. But whoever loses, I, I can't see a way back. So that type of pressure, which Liam has had once before in, in his previous fight, that's what you thrive on and that's what makes you what makes you get in the best shape that you possibly be in. I think he is. Come on, beef, man. <laughs> Hey, man, that music is going to give me copyrighted. What are they doing? I don't deserve this. What are they doing? Anyway, there's Colin. 
there was a, a Paul there, you know, really disappointed me in the shape he showed up. And he looked like that when he fought Andre Ward. So, yeah, they're talking about fighting for a title, bro. Listen, 154 pounds is crowded right now. Um, if, like, the winner of Jesse Vargas, Liam Smith, if they're on the way to a title, it wouldn't be until probably, like, like late 2023 or some 2024, some shit like that. You know, because 154, and I don't really, I really don't, I really don't have the time to break it all down for you. You know, but it's going to be a long path to be able to get to a title shot at 154 pounds. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you something. Believe Come on me. in. I Liam Smith, here, let's step closer. Let's step closer to the counter here, guys. We were just asking, you know, Callum what it meant for, for them to be able to Come make this trip with you for this big fight in this building. What does it mean to have your, your entire family by your side? I'm probably sure Callum gave the same answer that, that I had to give last year for him. We, we travelled here last year for Callum to fight here. And, you know, as people say, a story, a legacy, uh, whatever. I just think it just keeps adding to what we've achieved as a family. Um, me, personal, uh, a personal point of view. New York and Madison Square Garden's the one I haven't done yet. I've done Vegas, I've done Arizona, I've done Texas, I've done Russia, I've done Mexico. So, yeah, I've done Liverpool. So, you know, New York um, and it was obviously Madison Square Garden is, is a historic one and it's one that I'm humbled and privileged to, to be here. What are the first impressions of Fight Week in New York City? Yeah, good, obviously. Got a Fight, long way to go, but yeah. Yeah, a long way to go, obviously. But Fight Week is always exciting, you know, you're there, you're, you're in touch of distance and when you like a fight, you're always excited for fight week, so I'm happy doing what I'm doing. All right, tell me something about Molly here. Ha. What do you want to know? No, 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 no. Uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> All right, let's go hear what Jesse had to say. Nothing of note right there. I want to know, like, what the winner plans on doing next, damn it. Um, other undercard fights, I guess, is worth mentioning right now. Um, for Sean Cruz Deserve versus Elaine Selderus. That's for Undisputed right there. This could be its own card itself. Seven and one with two KOs, only lost to Clarissa Shields. She's um, no longer with uh, Golden Boy, but she has some quality fights under her belt. Remember, she pretty much fought a juiced up LGBTQ Alejandra Jimenez. Go look up the history where she lost her wig and all. Meaning, uh, for Sean Cruz Desern, she had her wig like ripped off her scalp and it was so did. You know, she was getting cussed at by her coach. The time and in Buffalo. Here is a, and uh, here's who she's fighting. She had an upset win over Alicia Napoleon, and that was so long ago. She's also on, what is this, a 23-month layoff? Jeez, and what's Napoleon been doing? It was supposed to be a build-up to try to get Clarissa Shields, but the wrong person won the fight. But, gee, she hasn't fought since. But basically, you know, both of these women, you know, haven't really been doing anything for some time. I'm just glad that the fight's happening overall. Um, as we said, Jesse Vargas, you know, one fight in 2019, one fight 2020, and now he's going against Liam Smith. He's going to be the smaller fighter, in my personal opinion. Let's listen to what he has to say. Can you, you see that? Thanks, Jesse. Might surprise you, you know. Hey, I don't. You no, know, so once I land all those punches, you know, let me have a little script. Money on me, we're gonna win this. Fight. That has been in the works for quite a while. The starting, the stopping. You had two training camps three. that three that ultimately, well, two that ultimately ended up without a fight. Two because of, because of this fight. Right. Uh, three with the one in May of last year. Gotcha. So it's been a long process. Uh, two years, a long layoff for me. Right, a little over two years. So three training camps, you know, for this fight, I think has been superb, has been very beneficial. I'm looking forward to really showcasing my talent and everything that I worked for, you know, all these uh, last few months, the last few training camps. Not only that, I think that this is a, it's a guarantee. You put your money on me, we're gonna win this fight. You know what I mean? What does Beefy offer? <coughs> What's his skill set that you're most, not apprehensive for, but, but need to look out for? What's his best assets? Um, his head, he uh, comes in, you know, he, you know, he gets hit a lot. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I took care of these bad boys during training camp, you know, so once I land all those punches, you know, I may have little scrapes here and there, but, you know, as long as uh, I take care of them, you know, I'm going to be fine. 
Meaning, I take care of my fist on his on his face. We're gonna be fine. You know, I'm not. I'm I think he might surprise you. You know. Hey, I don't. With what? <laughs> with what? Just wait. Just wait. I'm ready. I'm knocking his ass out. Oh, okay. So, so you've been training with Nenito Denaire. I know he's he's uh, he's he's a uh, he's a. Uh, just to give you some credit, he's uh, I mean, he's he's been Fox, around. Jesse. He's been around. Fox. He's been around. You know. Yeah. Um, and then um, as for Nonito, I mean, he's uh, one of the all-time greats. You know, and he's still going strong now. So uh, it's been a pleasure working with him. You know, being in the same training camp with him, um, learning alongside whatever you know he's doing. Because at the same time, I'm paying attention uh, to some of his movements, to what he is. Uh, I guess. Not correcting, but just enforcing, right? And empowering, which is beneficial to have. Big fight coming up. Mm -hmm. Big run for office coming up <laughs> as well here. He's running for Congress. What went Congress. into the decision to, I guess, simultaneously gear up for a very big training camp and also uh, do something that is pretty foreign to you? Yeah, uh, you know something, man. There's uh, three things that I love. You know, my family, my country, and this amazing sport of boxing. Um, and uh, our country seems to be deteriorating, seems to be in a difficult situation. So I figured that I do something to speak for my community, right? We did have to. I did have to. Uh, I must have to accept that I had to put my campaign on pause. The reason being that with the fight postponing, as you claimed yourself, mm -hmm. the fight was originally set for February 5th, and right, right. after that, we were going to campaign right um, every month till June. Well, now, the fight is postponed is April 30th. It doesn't give me enough time to campaign, knock on doors, speaking with the voters. So uh, we're definitely going to set things up. I'm still going to be very involved with the community, right, to where I can represent them in different ways, which I'm really looking forward to. You know, we need different... Uh, representatives from different backgrounds, different demographics, because our country is so united and so diverse, right? There you see Amanda Serrano stepping into the ring, getting ready for her workout portion. So did he just say he's no longer running for whatever he was running for? He's going to put his campaign on pause. Well, anyway, overall, you know, nice seller on the car. Remember, we're going to be here on a Saturday night covering this. And the good thing is the main event, this is a, basically this is an early start car. The main event is going to be starting around what 10 15 or so p.m you know so it's not going to interfere basically this card and top rings card main card are not going to be interfering but you got sky nicholson on the card uh rashad maddie on the card uh galau yafai on the card and then of course you know the uh big fights from shannon cruz deserve versus elin soda ruse katie taylor and mantis serrano jesse vargas versus liam smith austin Amo williams versus cordell booker if i was to rate this card i would give this card an a because you have three fights that can be easily be its own main event. You know, even down, you know, Fred for Sean Cruz Zern versus Elaine Sell the Roof. That that can be its own main event. So overall, I'm really interested to see what the atmosphere is gonna be like. And um I'm definitely gonna be here covering. Let me see. I'm gonna be doing a video on one, two, three, at least three fights on this card. I'm interested in Austin Williams, um, um, Cordell Booker. Jordell Booker, Jordell Booker, how do you pronounce his name? But not really right now. You know, I won't be adding him to the rotation just yet. Uh, take your time out, like the video, subscribe. I am T3 Controversy with Fight View 360.